Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to English Cafe. This is Mamta again with today's vocabulary live session at 4 p.m. Indian time. Please join me live for this session and we will learn 10 advanced English words and phrases from today's world news. And as you know that we learn words and phrases from the newspaper headlines and we're using the Hindu. And today it's the world news. It's on page number 14. So we'll discuss these headlines. And while we discuss the world news, we'll also learn some new words, phrases, and expressions. So please join me for the session and let's learn some new words. And for, for someone who has joined us for the first time today, let me tell you that we conduct this live session at 4 p.m. Indian time every day. So please join us live at 4 p.m. every day to learn vocabulary. And uh, if you would like to speak English fluently and confidently, you can join an online spoken English course at English Cafe. We allow you to practice English in groups or practice one on one. So if that's something you're looking for, you can join an online course by visiting our website or you can call us, WhatsApp us, and talk to us. So that's about the courses. Now, let's come back to our topic, which is newspaper vocabulary. I hope some of you have joined. Let me just check. Oh, OK. A lot of you are live. That's great. Hi, Morley. Good evening, and thank you for joining. I'm doing good, Morley. How are you doing? Hi, Arti. Good evening. How are you doing, Arti? I hope, you, I hope you're doing good. So now, let's talk about today's vocabulary. Let's learn these words. So here is the first headline from today's newspaper. It says, Facebook whistleblower calls for regulation. You can see this on your screen. So I'm sure you're aware of this news that recently there was this uh, outage. Uh, I think it happened day before yesterday when uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram were not working. There was complete outage. They, these platforms were not working. So this person has come up and she says that we need to regulate Facebook. So we're calling this person who was an ex-employee of Facebook, we're calling her a whistleblower because she says that Facebook has, no, Facebook knows that uh, certain features or certain Things they do are not good for children. Uh, they are not good for the society, but they still do it. So she says we need to regulate it. So we are calling her a whistleblower. What does it mean? Let's discuss the word whistleblower. A whistleblower is a person who tells someone in authority that something illegal is happening or something wrong is happening. That person is called a whistleblower. Please pay attention to the pronunciation. It is whistleblower and not whistle. It's not whistle, it's whistle. Similarly, like it is what, when, why, which, etc. No, no eight sound here. So we say whistleblower. So whistleblower is a person who tells the people that you know something wrong is happening, something illegal is happening. So this person is called a whistleblower. Some people are uh, like some people are genuinely concerned about something uh, and they uh, try to raise their voice. Some whistleblowers, but some whistleblowers are just uh, attention seekers. So just to seek attention, they can just say that, you know, something injustice is happening or something illegal is happening. So they do it just for uh, just for seeking attention. But we call them whistleblowers. All right. So the first word that we learned today was whistleblower. Is it clear to you? Do you understand this word? Please let me know in the comments, say a yes or a no. Can you type a yes if you understand the word whistleblower? Please let me know in the comments. I'll see. Aarti says I'm good. That's great, Aarti. Good to have you here. Please, uh, please tell me, do you understand the word whistleblower? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. Okay, Murli says yes, Arti says yes, that's great. Okay, great. I would like everybody here to participate during the session and talk to me. 
because i don't want to i don't want it to be a it to be a monologue it's not a speech it has to be a dialogue you should be participating so please participate great okay uh, javed says yes thank you thank you guys so you got the word whistleblower so such people are whistleblowers like this female who worked in facebook earlier she was aware of the policies of the work they do so she is a whistleblower she is telling the world she is telling the us government that certain policies are not good or certain things they do are not good for the youth are not good for children etc so let's move on and let's discuss another word the same headline further says that the company intentionally hides vital information from the public governments around the world so as you can see she has said so this this uh, sentence is a quote she has spoken this sentence she has said that the company intentionally hides vital information from the public and the governments around the world so there are three expressions that we will discuss here first of all intentionally second vital and third will be around the world so uh let's first discuss intentionally oh yes but before we discuss intentionally we left one more word in the previous headline it's a it's a phrasal verb it is called for i will read the headline for you again it said facebook whistleblower calls for regulation so the other word there was call for like she is calling for regulation she has called for regulation let's discuss the expression call for call for is a phrasal verb and to call for something means to say publicly that something must happen for example uh for example the government called for the government called for following covid appropriate behavior that means they asked the people to do it they asked the people that they must follow covid appropriate behavior or the prime minister called for unity among different communities in the society so called for or the prime minister called for uh, called for the need for vo what was it vocal for local so he called for vocal for local what that means is he told publicly he said publicly that this should happen that we should be vocal for local so that is the expression call for i'll repeat to call for something means to say publicly that this thing should happen like call for peace so that is like to tell publicly that we need peace or the to call for say uh, to call for their rights that means to ask everybody that they need their rights to tell publicly that you need your rights so to call for something that's the expression i hope you understood it please let me know with a yes or a no in the comments you can also give me a thumbs up if you understood the expression call for is it clear give me a thumbs up if it's clear let me know please so to call for call for action call for peace uh call for a meeting or call for setting regulations etc that's how you can use it did you understand it please give me a thumbs up before we move on okay i'll see if i have comments let me just check um okay thank you thank you rena um called for rena says i called for my party due to being sick oh so that is called off rena called off what you want to say is you called off your party maybe you cancelled the party because you were sick but to call for so guys these are phrasal words call off call c call o w o w f off to call off means to cancel if you did not know that's what it means for example the meeting was called off or they called off their wedding that means they canceled it but to call for if you change the preposition the meaning changes to call for something means to demand it or to say publicly that this thing should happen a call for peace is to say or to tell everybody that there should be peace so that's how it is used i hope you got it give me a thumbs up murli says call for nia investigation in violence and farmer protest that's right who called for it yes like the up government or the family members called for 
So yes, you can say that. Hope you guys got it. Give me a thumbs up or say a yes. Say yes, I got it in the comments. Then I know that you have understood it. Now, moving on to the next headline. Oh, yeah. So the next headline that we were discussing, let's talk about it. So we were discussing the next headline, which said, the company intentionally hides vital information from the public the gov and the governments around the world. The first word here is intentionally. Intentionally means deliberately. Intentionally means you knew you shouldn't do it. You knew this will harm somebody, but you still did it and harm the person. That means you did it intentionally. Intentionally, deliberately means doing something with your own will. So that's intentional, deliberate, etc. Please use the words intentionally or deliberately in a sentence. For example, uh, I never hurt anyone intentionally. Or uh, I have, uh, no, or uh, I did not, uh, I did not try to offend you intentionally. So intentionally or deliberately means doing it with your own wish. Please let me know how you're going to use it in a sentence. Uh, okay, great that you got the last expression. I hope you understood the word intentionally also. Yes or no? Do you understand the meaning of the word intentionally? Let me know in the comments, guys. Hi, Imam. Thank you for joining the session. Welcome. How are you? Okay. Did you understand? Imam, do you understand the word intentionally? What it means? Like, she intentionally, uh, maybe like she intentionally hurt me or she intentionally put it here or uh, she intentionally shouted at me publicly. So intentionally. Did you understand it? Please let me know in the comments. Murli says, intentionally, I don't want to hurt you. Yeah, that's correct. Guys, I hope you understood it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you understood the expression intentionally, give me a thumbs up or say yes, I got it. Or just say a yes, I know that you understand. So I'll know that you've understood it. That was intentionally. Now, next one was uh, vital. Yeah, so the other word here is vital. This lady says, the, this whistleblower says that Facebook intentionally hides vital information from the public and from the governments. So the next word here is vital, V-I-T-A-L. Vital, if something is vital, that means it's extremely important. Maybe it's so important that you can't survive without it. So if something is vital, that means it's extremely important. For example, English language plays a vital role in our careers these days, right? It plays a vital role. It's extremely important because you, know, you can't have a successful career, uh, especially in, uh, you know, in this global era, if you cannot communicate in English. So that's, that's what a vital thing is. What else is vital for us? Like these days, even mobile phones are vital for us because we can't get education without a mobile phone, especially during COVID. We can't get an education or uh, we can't connect with people. So mobile phones are vital. That's the word vital. Vital means extremely important. I hope you understood it. For all of you who are participating, do you understand the word vital? Please tell me in the comments. Say yes, I do, or no, I don't, or give me a thumbs up. But please let me know that you understand the word vital. Do you understand it? Please let me know. All right. Um, I have a few comments. Ramakant says he's intentionally abstains. Okay, abstain. What, what is this word? I can't understand it. Oh, absenting. He is intentionally absenting to the function. Okay, uh, we can say that. Or he is intentionally absent at the function. Great one, Ramakant. Do you understand the word deliberately? Please let me know. Deliberately or intentionally. Murli says, you played a vital role to improve my communication skills. Great. All right, Rina, thank you for letting me know that you did get it. 
Ramakal says the opposition parties, the opposition party plays a vital role in running the smooth government, running the smooth administration. Absolutely. Great example, Ramakal. Thank you for that example. So I hope you understood the word vital. Give me a thumbs up. Please participate if you're here. I would like to have a dialogue. I don't like to have, I don't like to have monologues. I would like to interact. I would like you to interact with me. So please let me know. Vital was the next word. And another expression here is around the world. We know this, like we see this expression every day, but I just thought I should discuss with you. Around the world. She said that Facebook has hidden this uh, vital information from the people and the governments around the world. What does the expression around the world mean? Let's discuss it. So around the world means it can definitely not be like this, not like around the world, but around the world means in various parts of the world, like wherever there is Facebook, right? So around the world means in various parts of the world. For example, if we say that we have our offices around the world, that means that we have our offices in various parts of the earth. So that's the expression around the world. Do you understand it? Please let me know. Do you understand the expression around the world? And how are you going to use it in a sentence? Please let me know quickly. All right. Um, Murli says, I didn't get vital service from government in COVID time. Great example. Alia says, education is vital in today's world. That's right, Alia. Murli says, COVID-19 spread around the world due to China. Due to China hid vital details. Okay. Great, Murli. Great. You could have used the word vital as well. Ankita says, plants play, plants play vital role for survival of living beings. Wonderful example, Ankita, right? That's how you use the word vital. Ramakan says he travels around the world. Great example. Yes, guys, please use the expression around the world in a sentence. I hope you understood this expression. Do you get the expression around the world? Please tell me, say a yes or a no. Is it a yes? Have you understood the expression around the world? Please say a yes or a no. So we just discussed these three words and expressions in this headline. We discussed intentionally, vital, and around the world. Yeah, thank you, Rina, for being a sport and always participating. Thank you, Sujit. Okay, uh, Murli says vital pharmacy needed. All right, great. Thank you for letting me know that you get it. I hope you understood the expression around the world. Now let's move on and let's talk about another headline. So, you know, yesterday we, uh, not yesterday, but day before yesterday, we talked about, um, we talked about this church where a lot of, a lot of uh, these church members, members, no, no, like church workers, we'll call them. A lot of these church workers were found to be pedophiles. Do you know this word pedophile? It's not being discussed today, but it was discussed the day before. We discussed the word pedophile. It's like P-E-D-O-P-H-I-L-E -E or P-A-E-D-O-P-H-I-L-E. -E. The pedophile, a pedophile is a person who is sexually interested in children. So pedophiles are like dangerous for the society, right? So we discussed about that news and it's about the same news that we're talking today. This headline says, Massive child sex abuse in French Catholic Church. Isn't that shameful? Like the places that are meant for prayers and worship of God have massive child abuse or has massive child abuse. That's so shameful. But talking about the vocabulary, the first one is massive. M-A-S-S-I-V-E. -S -S what does that mean? The word massive means exceptionally large like very big that's massive we can say large very big very very large so the word for all these is another word is massive like they're saying that the child sex abuse in the church is massive that means the sex abuse that's happening is you no know, really at a large 
really large in numbers maybe that's you know disgusting so massive massive is exceptionally large the other expression here is sex abuse or sexual abuse what does it mean the term sexual abuse but first of all let's discuss abuse you know that abuse is when you don't use appropriate language that's abuse but say drug abuse or abuse of power or uh, uh, what do we call it sexual abuse so if anything is abused that means you you do things in a way that you know that shouldn't be done for example drug abuse is when people take drugs when they are not prescribed or when they take drugs illegally so that's drug abuse or if we say uh, if we say sexual abuse that means indulging in a sexual act with someone when they are not willing for it so that's sexual abuse so or say an abuse of power that means doing something wrong using your power so if you abuse anything that means you do something wrong using that thing so that's the word abuse can you think of any other abuses like i gave you examples of sexual abuse abuse of power or drug abuse etc can you give me some more examples of abuses that exist in the world in our society please let me know so that was this this headline particularly had sexual abuse which means engaging in a sexual act with somebody when they are not willing to do it so that's sexual abuse i hope you understood these two words massive and abuse please let me know in the comments with a yes or a no say a yes or a no yeah okay hi kartar thank you for joining the session murli says fear and heating now the day around the world oh what was that i couldn't understand that murli murli says fake news are trending very quickly around the world right yeah i got it now sasho says massive means huge that's right that's right sasho says rubbish word which one sex abuse yeah abuse is rubbish absolutely murli says massive religion conversation in up by islamic scholars do you mean religious conversion conversion or conversation what did you mean murli maybe you meant conversion okay murli says she booked a case against me of sexual abuse of sexual abuse that's right many a time there is an abuse of laws as well so abuse of a law would mean that we are misusing the law so an abuse of something is actually a misuse of that thing so here maybe like there there could be there could be women who could just misuse a law maybe for their own personal agendas or because they had a vendetta against someone so they could they could abuse the law so like in murli's case ramakan says a massive support has been received from the public in the covid-19 vaccination drive in india wonderful example ramakan so he says massive support great example you meant conversion murli c o n v e r s i o n conversion right you got it great so i hope you understood these words massive and abuse you understood that abuse can be used with many other things like abuse of power abuse of law abuse of uh, what was it drugs etc try to use it in a sentence like that let me know in the comments i hope you understood it give me a thumbs up if you understood the words say yes i've got it or yes it's clear please let me know and now i will move on to another headline again it's the actually it's the same headline which says pope expresses great pain over the appalling findings the pope you know what who a pope is a pope is a priest in the church so the pope of this french catholic church has expressed great pain and he has found these findings appalling let's discuss the word appalling here the word appalling means shocking 
if something appalls you appall can be a appall is a verb and appalling is an adjective so for example if the news appalled you that means it shocked you maybe for example when uh, when uh, aryan khan was arrested for uh, drug use it must have been appalling for his parents so appalling means shocking is there anything that's appalling to you yeah for example how people uh, how people um how people argue with each other in the name of religion on social media is appalling sometimes that means it's shocking to some people so appalling please use the expression appalling in a sentence let me know how you're going to use it appalling is the word okay so i'll wait for you guys to use the word appalling did you understand to appall means to shock if something appalls you it shocks you and if you call something appalling that means it is shocking like appalling news or uh, appalling discovery or uh, anything anything that's appalling that means it is shocking appalling behavior maybe like his behavior is appalling that means it was shocking i hope you got that give me a thumbs up if you did all right tashu says my friends appalled appalled me by cheating great one yes Murli says appalling news for Shahrukh Khan and her his wife. That's right, appalling news for them. So that's the word appall. I hope you understood it. Can you tell me with a yes or a no, please? Please tell me. Did you understand the word appalling? Say a yes or a no. Could you write yes in the comments? Please write yes in the comments or no in the comments if you didn't understand it. Please let me know. And now I'll move on and I'll talk about another headline. very interesting words in today's newspaper so here is this headline which is about taiwan so it says uh sorry okay so it says i don't know how to pronounce the name but i'll say it's sai warns of catastrophic consequences if taiwan falls so the sai is the president of taiwan you know taiwan is a country so she is the president of taiwan and she says she says that if taiwan falls that mean if the if the government falls we will they will have catastrophic consequences we'll discuss the words catastrophe and consequence so let's discuss the word catastrophe you can take a look at the example it says catastrophic but let's first discuss catastrophe catastrophe is spelled c a t a s t r o p h e so we call it catastrophe not catastrophe or something it is catastrophe you should know the pronunciation as well so catastrophe she has said the president has said that there will be catastrophe so what's a catastrophe let's discuss that a catastrophe is a sudden event that causes very great trouble or destruction for example a natural catastrophe for example many natural disasters bring catastrophe with them they they make a catastrophic situation that means what these disasters do is they you no know, damage things they destruct things uh, they bring a lot of trouble to people so that's a catastrophe if something happens and it brings a lot of trouble a lot of destruction you can call it a catastrophe and catast so catastrophe is a noun and catastrophic is an adjective so you can call that thing catastrophic like a catastrophic storm or a catastrophic event or a catastrophic incident etc or a catastrophic accident so if an incident is catastrophic that brought you that brought a lot of destruction that brought a lot of trouble so that's what we call a catastrophe give me examples of a few catastrophic situations guys can you give me examples of some catastrophic situations in the comments please let me know that's right kartar says catastrophic means disastrous yes that's right 
All right, Murli says tsunami catastrophe in Chennai last year. That's right, Murli. Tsunami is spelled T S U N A M I. Okay, mm -hmm. Alia says COVID 19 has, oh, was appalling for the world. Wonderful example, Alia. That's right. Re yes, a catastrophe is, is an awful situation, a disastrous situation. Can you give me some examples of catastrophes? in the comments give me an example of a catastrophe or a catastrophic situation let me know so i hope you understood that word i would also like to discuss the word consequence you can see the word consequence on your screen the word consequence is like other word for results like if you um if you if you live a sedentary life you never work out and eat a lot of junk food, your health will face the consequences or you will have bad consequences on your health. That means the result of not working out, not eating healthy will be bad. So consequence means result. All right, for example, if you don't, if you don't listen to me, be ready to face the consequences. Be ready to face the consequences means be ready to face the results. The consequence is kind of another word to say results. Please use the word consequence in a sentence. I'll see if I have any comments. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Sashu says after COVID people had to face catastrophic situations, Sashu. Murli says catastrophic floods in Bihar every year. Okay, you should say, especially in Northern Bihar. That's right, Murli. Ramakan says, we should pay a lot of man-made catastrophic situations in the future. We should face, we are going to say we should face, we will face, etc. Okay, Ankita says, people faced catastrophic, catastrophic, Ankita. People faced catastrophic situations in lockdown. Wonderful example, Ankita. Tashu says, there is a catastrophe there is a catastrophic consequences of financial situation all over the world due to covid-19 wonderful example tashu you could maybe make the sentence a little better but wonderful use you have used the both the words correctly alia says smoking has bad consequences that's right in fact smoking has uh, hazardous or uh, what do you call fatal consequences Kartar says, aftermath of COVID-19 is catastrophic. Great example, Kartar. Murli says, I prepared a report. This will definitely uh, consequences for my client. Okay. I think this is not an appropriate use, Murli. Uh, a consequence is like a result of doing something. Like to face consequences means to face results. Here it's not very appropriate. Maybe try to rephrase your sentence, Murli. See how you can make it better. Now, we just discussed catastrophe and consequence. I hope you understood the words. Did you? Give me a thumbs up. Say yes if you have understood it. Please say a yes in the comments. Or a no if you didn't understand. Please let me know. And I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk about another headline. And another word for us, it says, over 100 musicians flee Afghanistan. So as you know that Afghanistan now has Taliban regime and Taliban is an extremist group. They, are, they believe in Sharia law. So they don't allow people to, uh, to maybe create music, play music, enjoy music. They are anti-music. I think, I think Sharia law is anti-music. I don't know, but I think that's the thing. So because there are musicians in uh, Afghanistan and now because uh, the Taliban government won't allow music, so they are fleeing Afghanistan. Let's discuss the word flee, F-L-E-E. -E. Let me tell you that it's a verb. Flee is a verb. And to flee means to run away because of danger. Okay. Uh, if it's a dangerous place, people flee. For example, many people fled Afghanistan and now these people are also 
fleeing Afghanistan. So flee is a verb. You can use it in all the form like flee, please, fleeing, fled, etc. Flee, fled, fled, fleeing, please, etc. So that's the word flee, okay? Tell me if you got it and use it in a sentence. The past form for flee is fled. So many people flee their countries at different points of time whenever their countries become dangerous or when there is like there's an attack or when there is a dictator in the country so people try to flee right so that's the word flee please use it in a sentence and i would go ahead and read the last headline for you it says biden promised to defend disputed islands says kishida so kishida is the new prime minister of japan kishida says that Mr. Joe Biden, as you know, Mr. Joe Biden is the president of the United States. So Mr. Joe Biden had promised to defend the disputed islands. I would like to discuss the word island with you here. I'm sure you know the word island already, but so many of us don't know how it is spelled. So take a look at it. I-S-L-A-N-D. I-S-L-A-N-D. The pronunciation is island, island, island. That's the pronunciation. Um, for example, Mauritius is a beautiful island. So you know the word island. If you come across this word, now you know how to speak it, island. You know island, island is, island is a piece of land that's, uh, that's surrounded by a water body, right? That's an island, like Mauritius is an island. Can you give me some more examples of islands? Like in India, we have Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Give me some more examples of islands around the world. Let me know, please, in the comments. And I'll see if I have any hundred comments, okay? Sashu says, yeah, to flee means to escape, to run away from a dangerous situation. That's right. Gurtar says, he fled away from the spot. Great. Please correct the spelling, Gurtar, F L. E D. Tashu says he fled from the jail while police took him for hearing. Yeah, like while police was taking him for a hearing. Okay, was taking him. Ramakan says the thief smelled the danger and fled from the building. Great example, Ramakan. Murli says Rohingyas fled away from their own country. That's right. Huang says he has fled from fighting in tears. All right. Okay, so guys, the last word was island. Give me some examples of islands around the world. And tell me if you've understood the words flee, island. Have you understood them? Give me a thumbs up or say a yes or a no. I will know that you've understood it. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the words for you. Let's just quickly review all the words. If you want to make some notes, please feel free to do that. The first word was, the first word that we discussed, it was whistleblower. A whistleblower is a person who tells someone in authority that something illegal is happening or something illegal has happened or something bad is happening. So that person is a whistleblower. The next word was intentionally. Intentionally means willingly, deliberately, etc next one was vital vital means extremely important the next one was around the world around the world means in various parts of the earth in various parts of the world next one was massive massive means exceptionally large huge monumental so these are the words massive huge gigantic, monumental, all these words means you know, really huge, really large, etc. So massive. Next one is, was abuse, like a sexual abuse or a drug abuse or abuse of a law or abuse of power. That means misuse of that thing. All right. And the next one was appalling. Please take a look at the pronunciation also. The pronunciation is Appall, appall or appalling. Appalling means shocking. The next word was catastrophic. So 
if something is disastrous, if something causes a lot of destruction, that thing is catastrophic. That event is catastrophic. The next one was consequence. Consequence is a result, a result of doing something. Like the consequences of doing good things are good and the consequences of doing bad things are always bad. The consequences, consequence means a result. Uh, the next expression was, oh, did I miss any expressions? Um, no, I think no, we discussed all, the, all of them. The next one was um, flee. Okay, so to flee means to run away. And the last one was island. An island, you know, an island is a piece of land that's surrounded by water. So that's island. Oh, so I think we missed one expression, which was call for something. To call for something means to say publicly that this should happen. To say publicly that this thing should happen or to demand for it. That is to call for that thing. So guys, these were the words and expressions I had for you for today. I hope you learned some new expressions. And you know, th these words are like so commonly used words. I'm sure you would agree with me that all these words are used very often because all these things happen in our lives very often and we need to talk about them. So uh, I personally found these words very useful uh, for us to have in our vocabulary. How did you find this session? Please let me know. And uh, if this was your first day attending this session, I would again like to tell you that we conduct this session at 4 p.m. every day. And if you did not share, please share this session. After you leave this live video, please hit that share button and share it with your friends. And I'll see if I have any unread comments. All right, I think I do. Uh, Kartar says there are seven islands in Andaman and Diu. All right, thank you for letting us know. Thank you, thank you, Huang, for telling me. Murli says, I will go for a for vaccination in some beautiful island this year. For vaccination or for a vacation, Murli? I'm not sure. Do you mean vaccination or do you mean vacation? Please let me know. Murli says, Andaman and Nicobar is beautiful island for relaxation. That's right, okay. Kartar says, wonderful vo vocabulary today. Thank you, Kartar, thank you so much. Murli says, I call for justice. For those who are dead in protests, right? Great example. So guys, I hope you found this session useful, meaningful, conducive for yourself and learn something new. And that's all from me for today's session. Please join us tomorrow for another vocabulary live session. Until then, please take care and keep learning. Bye-bye.